There's been a lot of talk of an impending global recession, but is gold still the default safe haven if we did see the economy contract? Hello, I'm David Jones from Capital.com, and I thought we'd take a look at some of the talk uh, about uh, an upcoming global recession, how that's going to impact the gold price, how it's performed in the past, and um, what we might expect over the, the medium to longer term for the price of gold. In a second, we'll catch up with what's been going on with gold. I'll come back and talk a bit more about the factors uh, why people think there is going to be a reasonable chance of recession in the next 12 months. Then we'll look at the performance of gold in recessions over the last uh, 40 years, uh, catch up with the chart and uh, just to see really if this is the place where investors are likely to park their money. Uh, as usual, if you're watching and you don't subscribe, click on subscribe, support the channel. We'll continue to push out content uh, like this. But first of all, let's have a quick catch up with what's been going on with gold over the last few weeks. So let's have a quick catch up with what's been um, going on with gold. There was a lot of talk about recession. Um, during August, we had the trade wars, we had the inverted yield curve. I'm going to talk about that a bit more in a second. And, and this is where we saw gold really get a move on, trading from around about, what, 1400 end of July, beginning of August. And you can see a little more than a month later, it was up at, what, 1550. So we saw a 10% rise uh, in the price of gold, partly fueled by these fear, fears. They definitely played, played their part. But since then, perhaps some of that chat has died down and we've seen the price drift off. Um, we're going to come back and look at this in a lot more detail. And I've got a really interesting chart uh, that shows gold's performance in a recession. But first of all, let's just talk about some of the factors that might um, kick things higher. So in a second, we're going to um, have a look at how gold has performed over the last 50 years or so during various recessions. But first of all, let's just talk about this, this idea of recessions a bit further, just, just to qualify what we're talking about. You know, the definition of a recession is two consecutive quarters of negative growth. So um, you know, two quarters where GDP uh, has gone negative. You know, we're not seeing uh, it's a growth. So if we have six months of that, that's it, we're in a recession. Talk about a recession really ramped up during the summer. We had this uh, inverted treasury yield curve. We did do a video on that um, a couple of months ago. Go back and take a look, find out a bit more about it. Um, but when this has happened, it has preceded all major world recessions. So that got plenty of headlines, as you can imagine. You should say uh, that there is quite a lag. You know, it doesn't start the next week after this yield curve has uh, reverted, you know, have inverted, you know, but it has been a good predictor in the past. Then, of course, during the summer, we had plenty of talk and coverage of, of the trade wars uh, between the US and China and the impact that could have uh, on the global economy. Plus, of course, closest to home, uh, if you live in the UK, you can't afford the B word, Brexit, uh, what impact that's going to have on an already slowing European economy, as well, of, of course, as the UK economy. And in recent weeks, we have had weak manufacturing data, particularly out of the US, uh, where one measure of manufacturing activity hit a 10-year low. So there's been plenty of, of news out there to fuel the gloomsters. And back in the summer, the New York Fed said there was a 31.5% chance uh, of a recession by July 2020. And plenty of economists uh, are really ramping up their gloomy outlooks. You know, maybe as a caveat, you know, we should say that economists typically predict 15 of the last eight recessions. They tend to be, you know, a bit more pessimistic, perhaps rather than looking at the glass half full. And, and bad news, you know, does sell. So there's plenty of talk at the moment uh, about, about potentially a major slowdown over the next 12 months. In a second, we'll look at the charts and see how gold has performed over the last, last 50 years during sessions. Before we do that, a quick look at the levels to watch because we've had a fairly tight trading range uh, over the last few weeks. We've got all sorts of support and resistance fairly close to where the market is now. So we have that six year high hit beginning of September up at 1557, then 1535, 1520 as some closer in levels on the upside. On the downside, the most recent low uh, was in early October down at 1459. Then after that, uh, again, plenty of support clustered around the 1380, 1400 levels. So these are the ones to watch. Let's see how gold Gold has performed over the last 50 years. Let's take a quick look at the historical performance of gold in major world recessions. We've got data going back here to um, the early 70s. You can see 1975, uh, yes, the price does move higher. 1980, early 80s, um, we've got a bit of volatility, sells off initially, but then recovers uh, clearly as the recession 
got deeper. Then if we move uh, towards uh, mid to late eight, mid mid eighties, we've got again a blip at the start of a recession and then tailing off as the recession carried on. Pretty flat in the early nineties recession. Uh, early 2000s looks like it moves slightly higher and then um, really during the financial crisis uh, gold had been rallying for a good few years anyway and that seems to have just uh, given it extra impetus and then of course carried on pushing out uh, near 2000 so it, it doesn't rise all the time um, but also it it seems to be you know one of the maybe the least hard hit of assets you know even if it doesn't go up so it does perform it, based on the data we've got here, uh, it's sort of safe haven destination. You know, investors looking for somewhere safe to park their cash in times of trouble. Let's just remind ourselves the big picture uh, view for gold. So the recovery we're in started just over a year ago, August 2018, when the price was down at 1160. That touched 1557. Um, not much than a year later. That's a 34% rise. In the price of gold, that is a sizable rise uh, in a year. So I think we have to get maybe a bit a bit cautious about expecting too much again from where we are now until there's uh, some sort of change in the underlying uh, fundamentals. So at the moment, clearly we've got a bit overheated uh, from this longer term trend line, but but that trend is still intact. So any weakness on gold still looks like a buying opportunity. You know we've got lots of support coming in. June lows 1320 through to this whole 1400, 1440 area. So for me, any weakness in gold still looks like a, a buying opportunity for the medium term. But, you know, we'd seen it get get overheated on the way up. You know, it, it jumped 10 percent in August into September. Uh, that was that was a big move. So it's not surprising that we're seeing maybe some of that uh, cooling off. So we've been drifting since those highs uh, hit in, in early September. Arguably, that's still in something of a correction. If we can break back above 1500, 1520, we'll find a bit more momentum uh, to the upside. But but at the moment, it, it's just become something of a dull market. You know, clearly we can't have the same market being exciting day in, day out. And after the sort of rises we'd seen in gold, it was it was due a pause. That's it for this look at uh, how well or not gold has done in recessions. We'll wrap things up there. So from me, David Jones and Capital.com, Good luck with your trading.